Hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, this is gonna be a unboxing and review of the new Ego uh, carbon fiber shaft string trimmer. This is the 16 inch cordless with the power load and with the IQ technology. So on this trimmer, you will not have a um, bump head anymore. They've uh, designed these now where the line will just feed itself out. And uh, it's supposed to feed itself out to exactly 16 inches. Anyways, I bought this one from Lowe's a couple days ago and I'm just now getting the chance to open it and uh, get the opportunity to register it. And this one comes with the standard Ego charger and a 4 amp hour battery as well, which is actually pretty nice because the old ones used to uh, be bare tool only or they would come with a 2.5 amp battery, um, which is alright. They do alright on the 2.5 amp hour battery, but uh, 4 amps is definitely better to uh, be able to work with that way. So, yeah, without further ado, we're going to get into the box, show you what it looks like in here. Nice and brand new and fresh. And uh, the reason I bought this one is um, actually for my wife to use uh, when, and, uh, and, and for me to use when we are uh, working on the property because it has a telescoping feature. And she's not as tall as I am. She did find some issue with uh, using the other... Um, carbon fiber shaft trimmers that are not telescoping and uh, she found where it was just kind of locking up on her hand a little bit there which I've heard that um, in many cases where people have had issues with that and uh, especially people with smaller hands I have larger hands so I don't deal with that issue but her hands are smaller um, and so she was kind of dealing with that issue where it was wanting to lock up on her so without further ado, let's get into this thing, show you the unboxing. I'm sorry the camera's moving so much, I don't know where I put my stand. And so I'm kind of just freehanded this. Um, I may end up trying to set it up somewhere on one of my shelves here to uh, give you guys a better um, look at this stuff. This is also going to be the assembly of this uh, trimmer, as well as, if I get time, the review of the old trimmers. Um, good or bad and how uh, how well they're doing and things you'll want to pay attention to for maintenance and other stuff like that. So, instructions book. It has the uh, new yellow eagle line uh, um, that came with it. I don't really use that stuff because I use the commercial grade orange line. I just find it lasts longer. I guess the yellow line's probably the same thing. It's just yellow so you can see it easier. But, uh, I don't know if that's standard issue now these days, but I use the orange stuff. Um, I just buy it by the big big spools. It's cheaper that way. So we're just going to throw that up there for now. We get our nice trimmer. Very lightweight. I'm literally picking this up with one hand. And this is very, very well balanced. And that's just with it being folded. It's... I can definitely feel if I was to grab right here and this thing was to be opened, I'm not going to have an issue with the balance at all on it, which is nice. That tells me they're looking into it. I do like this uh, feature here. This is actually rubberized plastic. Um, I'm not even sure that's plastic, to be honest, I think. Yeah, that's rubberized plastic on there, so that's pretty cool they've, that they've switched that over to an armor uh, rather than just having the standard um, glossy plastic. The glossy plastic looks nicer, but over time it does get scratched, takes beatings, it gets dirt in it, and it just doesn't look as good. Now this stuff's probably going to get scratched too, but hey, at least they were thinking armor-wise, um, it's going to be able to take a little more beating that way. Now, things I'm already noticing right off the bat with this is that it has a variable speed control on it. And I guess that lights up uh, to low power, high power. It has your telescoping notch here for pulling your handle out or in. And you're going to get 
probably, I want to say about six inches on that. And I'm just going to leave it out for now. So, but it doesn't seem like a lot, but six inches actually really can make the difference on uh, these trimmers as far as if you're a smaller person um, and you just need to close it up six inches smaller, then you always have that option. Sorry, I'm holding the camera still here. You always have that option with it to just kind of get it where it's more comfortable for you. Anything within that range. Um, they're still going with the wire there. I don't think that's the best idea, especially if you're going to use it as often as I do. Um, I, I did find with the other trimmers where I was having some issue with that. Um, where the contact switches on the other trimmers were... Uh, shorting out which i'm glad to see they they get rid of the switch they get rid of that this little button that they used to have on the old trimmers which i can i can show you guys what i'm talking about is actually an issue for a lot of people now i find it comfortable because i can get it where it sits like right there when i go to squeeze the trigger and i don't have an issue with it so i can show you guys right here what i'm talking about you can see that switch right there. Now, the other issue that I have with these is that they get faulty in the switch. And that's not going to be something that you would normally find if you're just kind of using it here and there and putting around with it. But if you're using it all the time, um, it definitely will start to have issues that way. The other issue that I did find is that over time, um, the power load button will start to lock out, and that will have an issue. Um, I'm not sure if they fixed that on these newer ones. It looks like they went with a different type of power load switch. Um, it definitely feels different. I don't know, it feels a little harder to me than to push than the other ones. The other ones, they'll get a hardness to them as they get a buildup of dirt, which is expected because they're down by the dirt. Um, but I think what happens is the dirt actually gets into the groove when you push the button to reload it. And that actually causes it to get some form of a buildup inside the mechanism. And it keeps it from making uh, contact metal to metal when you need to use the power load. Um, <clears throat> with my other trimmer, what I actually found is that the head actually came loose on it, and that was from hitting rocks and other things like that, and dropping it in the truck bed all the time, and stuff like that. And so the head has come loose, and it's developed a little bit of a short in it. But other than that, the thing is still running strong. Um, it's doing just fine. If you run them too much though, and you try to take them into stuff that is more meant for like a brush cutter, they, uh, they will overheat, and if you keep running them after that, they will actually uh, burn out on the motors. It's not to say that they can't act as a brush cutter, that they can't get through that type of stuff. Um, even the line is strong enough to get through it. It's just, uh, I would not recommend doing that all the time. If you're going to do it maybe once a season, but uh, just not all the time. And uh, they do have the power to act as a brush cutter, but I just I just want to recommend doing it all the time with them. Um, don't get me wrong, Ego is great. It is a great product, powerful product on the newer stuff that they've been putting out over the I want to say the past two or three years. I've not been disappointed with a lot of it. There are some things like the older chainsaws, the uh, 16 inches. Uh, chainsaw and the 14 inch I've had some issues with as well as their power heads I've had a I am not satisfied with their power head uh, excuse me not the power head the uh, attachment um, power head the older one I've not been satisfied with that uh, just because I have purchased three of those now and had the same issue with all three of them where they just quit out. And I do believe that that is some type of an electrical issue when they get uh, too much torque on them and they just decide that they just don't want to work anymore. So, I've been babying my last power head 
and that is because there's nobody in my area that knows how to service Ego, and uh, you're pretty much done with it once your warranty's done. If you if you don't have a Lowe's or something around, and you didn't purchase a warranty from that particular store, uh, your tool goes out. You're pretty much done. They they'll give you only until the warranty for the year. That there's no places you can take it to where people know how to service that stuff. At least not in my area. Um, or anywhere like within 200 mile radius around my area where anybody really knows how to service ego tools and can have them back to you um, within the day it's usually one of those we'll take it uh, we got to send it out it'll take two or three weeks type of thing that's that's usually the big big box retail stores but as far as small engines go um, guys that normally do lawn equipment this is like alien technology to them. They don't know how to fix it. Um, so that's the downside. The upside to it is they are very powerful, very reliable, very durable tools. And they do compete with gas. Um, not, not talking about just little two-cycle string trimmers. I am talking about these things on, are on the level of still. Um, I want to say still is professional level. But I would still say that they are, uh, they are definitely past still as baseline gas models. And, uh, and they, as far as the endurance of them, I would say if they had a technician that could work on this stuff, um, in the area that knew how to fix these ego trimmers, they would be doing very well that way because these things will last you a lot longer than gas before they need any form of maintenance on them. And you can beat the fire out of these things. I wouldn't recommend it, but you can do it. And uh, they're just, they are a little bit pricey up front, but they will save you a lot of money in the long run as far as maintenance goes. Um, gas is always the carb goes out, or, or the uh, fuel line gets clogged up with something, or uh, the valves or uh, cylinders or things like that need to be replaced or they're rubbing wrong or anything like that and it's just uh that stuff tends to pop up randomly at any point because you're dealing with a lot of heat and then you get a good hot summer day and a lot of that stuff just warps and it, you're pushing a lot of heat and combustion or through those combustion chambers and then you get a hot day on top of that and it just causes the uh, metal to warp through um Another feature I am noticing here that the other trimmers do not have is a locking feature. If, I, if I'm if i looking at that correctly, it's either a locking feature or a safety feature to keep it from engaging. I think that might be a safety feature. You have to click it in to keep it from engaging. Yeah, that's what that is. So you can't squeeze the trigger on this by accident unless you pull that up. Which is basically the same thing that the other switch was, but the other switch actually had a contact in it that was making connection. Uh, this one's just a little plastic clip that kind of folds up and gets out of the way. So we will see if that is cheaper or better in the long run than the other trimmers. But without further ado, let's get to the assembly process of this thing, and I will keep you guys updated as I'm going along with that. So pretty much these are self-explanatory. Uh, for putting the putting them together, you don't really have to think about it. It's pretty much just, uh, I mean, you don't even have to read the instructions. It's pretty much just putting the guard on and the handle. And uh, that's usually not hard at all. I mean, unless you're this your first time ever building a trimmer, in which case, read the instructions. They're pretty self-explanatory. Alrighty, guys. So, back to it. I uh, just wanted to give you an update. The way to put the guard on these, there's two screws, goes onto the bottom like that. You won't, don't try to mount it to the top because it won't work. Um, so if you just connect it straight to the bottom, it's parallel with these two screws on the top. You have two screws on the bottom and uh, they're going to give you an Allen wrench in your package for that to screw those in. It's probably about a maybe minute, minute and a half process of putting that on there. So. Yes, without further ado, that is how you put the guard on. 
Sometimes you can operate these without the guard. Would not recommend it because they are powerful. They will throw stones, and uh, just if you if you get like a manicured area, then I mean it's fine. But if you're gonna be working in a rough area, would not recommend it. Alrighty, so let's get the rest of this thing built, and then we will fire it up so you guys can see how it runs. And uh, it's kind of nighttime outside, so I'm probably not gonna do any cutting with it, and at least not tonight. Uh, just because we want to be able to see anything that's too dark out there. But, yeah. We will uh, get that handle put on there and see what feels most comfortable that way. Alrighty, so two more features of this I wanted to be able to give you guys notice on. In the package, they do give you an extra, or they do give you a screw for binding this. Make sure you don't forget that. Um, it just keeps these two pieces from folding in on each other um, if you want to have them where you can fold them up they do um, you can go to your local hardware store and get a wing nut instead of the screw and then just untwist that wing nut real easy i did actually did it with one of my other trimmers that's just for storage reasons if you want to be able to collapse them down smaller and put them away rather than hanging them up somewhere um, but i can show you guys what that looks like this is their standard screw that they have and the uh, wing nut version that I did is actually makeshift. And if you don't mind that, that's just a, you can just unscrew that real quick. It'll, uh, as long as you remember where you're putting it, or you can screw it back in once you get the thing folded up. Um, but just for space saving reasons. Right now, I use mine so often that I just don't, uh, I'm just in that season of work where I just can't um, put them away, so I keep them out and hung on the shelf. But when the uh, winter time comes around and I don't need these for work anymore, then I just will use that wing nut more often and just fold them up and put them away. Anyways, um, another cool feature that these have is not something that they often talk about. It's the ability to. adjust your handle up or down to your liking. So within that six inches of that telescope, you can actually adjust the handle um, to, sorry, get this closed up here real quick. You can adjust the handle up or down within that six inches to meet your standards and how you prefer to trim and what's most comfortable for you. So that's a cool feature. I like the fact that it sits on there so tight. Uh, even when it's opened, it's still really hard to move up and down. Not really hard, but you do got to put a little muscle into it. And that's just extra guarantee in, in my book that it's not going to move around on you when you're using it, which is nice. And uh, also, it beats having to screw this thing in from the bottom. I don't know if you guys got the older ones and assembled them, but they have four little screws in the bottom here instead. And uh, they can be a little bit of a pain to try to get those in there, especially if you're trying to hold the trimmer up or anything like what I'm doing right now. Um, this thing, this handle can be a little bit of a pain on this particular model to get it on there, but once it's on there, uh, it's it actually just seats in real nice. It does have a little, um, a little uh, hinge here, or should I say, um, a piece for just locking the handle in there. I'm sorry, it's kind of out of focus. Let's see if you guys can see that. Okay, come on. There we go. So it's just a little plastic wedge there that uh, that slips up in there to keep it from moving around. It's a nice little extra feature. But without further ado, let us get the battery on this thing and show you guys what it looks like. Um, that way you can see if you can hear the difference for yourself. I don't know if you guys are using the old trimmers or not, but these newer ones definitely have more of a high power electrical sound to them. Um, just from my perspective, they just put out a lot more power. That's why they make that. Um, these line IQs, I'm not sure if they went with a different motor on them. I would assume that they're probably either using the same one as the previous model or that they went with a more powerful motor. Um, from my understanding, if they're going with 16 inches on the line, they probably have a different motor in there that's able to take uh, that type of line and that type of abuse. 
Um, the motors on the model under this were pretty, they did pretty good with those. They can take a pretty hard hit, um, heavy beating when you're using them. They almost act like brush cutters. So if you go put a more powerful motor in this thing, I would be very happy with that. Um, because that's basically going to be a brush cutter uh, at that point. And I'd be all right with that. So this thing, I think they already preset these to 16 inch line. Um, it looks like they do set them like that because that's going to cut off on that blade there when it does come around. And that's going to um, make it where you're getting that nice even flat cut on your line. If it's jagged, it's not going to cut your grass uh, straight or your um, if you're doing any type of edging with these things, it'll just chunk up a bunch of dirt and stuff like that. So, you guys have to excuse the mess in the background. I still have not gotten a chance to fully assemble my workshop yet um, for this stuff. I have been very, very busy this season and uh, doing lawn care. And also, I've been trying to do some personal projects like working on uh, maintenance for uh, the equipment and vehicles and um, building a deck and things like that. Just trying to uh, get stuff like that in order before winter time comes around a lot of outside stuff I figured if fall and winter come around I'll just be in here working where it's a little bit warmer All right, so let's get a battery on this thing and fire it up for you guys and Maybe sometime on uh, Sunday we'll end up doing a demonstration uh, As far as what it can do uh, Saturday is my Sabbath day. I'm a Christian and I do uh, believe that that is a day of rest. It's not something that is enforced by me uh, as far as um, if it's something type of mandatory work that really needs to be done. I do believe in doing that. Uh, I just call it my donkey. Um, and the parable Christ refers to in the Bible. But uh, Sunday is a day that I will usually, uh, I can usually work in the afternoon or something and, and I can be fine with that. So I'll probably end up doing the review on the cut on Sunday and then Monday's back to work um, but yeah let's slap this battery on here and show you guys how they do say to, that before you drain these out all the way on a tool that you should charge them up all the way so I'm just gonna do a small demonstration as far as just so you guys can hear the sound of it and then I'm gonna throw it up on the charger and let it charge I don't use these standard chargers they take way too long in my line of business to charge battery um, they'll take like an hour to charge a 7.5 amp hour battery, which isn't bad in the battery business. But when you put it on, uh, considering a fast charge, will charge one of those 7.5 amp hours in a half hour instead of an hour. That's what I go with. So these things I usually just storm and they get put away as like backup, backup, backup chunk type of thing. So uh, let's get a battery on this. All right, you guys. So this is low power. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. Get your nice up and close there. So that's the low power. You'll hear the difference in the higher power. this battery on a charger. I'll give you guys a review on Sunday on the actual cut quality of this thing. I'm sure it's going to do fine. It sounds like a beast. Okay, so I know I told you guys I will give you a review of the um, of the tool of the uh, previous model, which has just got the power load head and carbon fiber shaft and all that stuff. Now, 
one year review I'm already past that and they held up pretty strong I only had an issue at the end of the year with one of them and that's because I was using it as a brush cutter I brought the motor out on it and that was doing that all year long with it um, things you have to look out for power load button down here once it gets this build up on it for whatever reason I guess that gets inside it's very hard to push on some of these things and uh, sometimes it does not want to actually retract the line so if they made a manual version of that too where you could actually just twist it and it would feed it in that would be nice to have that with the power load so just if you have any issues with the button and the event that you don't have a warranty for these things because your tool is too old you don't have to worry about just being out of the trimmer altogether or trying to scramble around to find somebody that can fix the power load button it still would be nice to have a manual option now you can replace these with the uh, wing nut like what i did um, that's just an extra little thing the contact switches up here you have to worry about these going out on on you over time they will start to have a shorting issue with them where they will either take a while to engage with power or they just won't engage the power at all and that is the case with this one in some cases uh it just sometimes won't engage the power now my guess is it either got water up in there or it's gotten overheated or some type of electrical component uh, component has gotten fried out on it um i don't know exactly but just keep that in mind these older models this is their safety switch right here you have to press this and then press the back button there and uh, to, to engage it and um, as you can see with the newer model it has that little plastic I like the feel of this one better to be honest on the uh, older power loads um, it just feels more durable to me the uh, newer one it feels like it's cheap it feels like it's gonna break over time on the newer power loads but we will see I'm not gonna make a judgment like that on it just yet until we get to that one year review of using these um now granted these are being used or uh, this is my um second year in on these and they're still running strong they do have their issues with them i got one only one that i had to put top stock and that's because it flat out just stopped working on me and uh the motor burned out on it um one of these I got as a replacement. Uh, Ego does not require you to send the uh, previous trimmer back when you do the warranty on it. They just send you out another one as long as you still have the warranty. And I had to fight with them a little bit on that. Uh, that was a little bit of a story. They sent me out a replacement. They said it was brand new. I've had issues with the power on it. Uh, the same. I don't think it was brand new. I think it was refurbished. Um, so watch out for that. Make sure you're letting them know that you want a brand new trimmer if you're going to exercise your warranty to have that replacement with the brand new trimmer. Um, another feature that you can add on to these things is the harness for, or the uh, shoulder strap. Now, I don't really use these, but it is nice to be able to have them in the event that you're hanging um, the trimmers up somewhere like in a trailer. You can have an extra little clip to put them on. Uh, I did take the guard off of one of these. It helps if you're going through natural streamlines or anything that's tight quarters that way. Or if you're not worried about throwing rocks and hitting cars and other things. Um, if you're trying to get down in ditch lines and stuff like that. It does help to take the guard off. It also takes about 2 to 3 pounds of weight off of your trimmer. Makes it a little easier to carry around. I know it's not a big deal for a lot of people. But when you're doing that 8-10 hours a day. Like some of these commercial guys are. It will get to you after a while. Um, another thing, if your blade gets dull, your trimmer line, if not properly coming, if not properly being expelled out, if you don't get it perfectly even when you bump or when you go to retract these in from the uh, from the power load, if one side is longer than the other and your blade is dull, it will actually whip up here. Now that is the case that happened in this one. The line whipped up. Got caught on the blade, did not cut, threw the thing off, and it actually ripped right through the guard. Right through it. So that is showing you how powerful these trimmers are. Do not play with them. 
Do not treat them like they're toys just because they're battery powered. They are very powerful, very dangerous tools. Um, as any lawn care tool is. And if you want to see that, that's some hard, heavy duty plastic. This is like the same type of guard that still puts on their stuff. And this thing, the line just completely thrashed it. Um, so that being said, don't play around with it. You get your fingers down there when that thing's spinning fast enough because you didn't wait after you turn the power off on it. Uh, you're going to have some issues with getting your fingers cut. And trust me, if that can go through a giant one inch thing of Blackberry, which I've seen it, I've done it before, it can definitely go through a finger. So don't play around with the stuff. Um, if you're going to use it, respect it. Anyways, as far as my review goes on these, I would say the customer service, not the best. Um, at least uh, for the past couple of years, they haven't been, and I think they might get better as we get it uh, past the COVID thing, but uh, my warranties on my tools expired long before I could even exercise the warranties. Called them many times, never got a call back. Had to uh, get the BBB involved, and I finally ended up uh, getting a uh, email back from customer service and to replace the trimmer that went down and I had a few other tools that went down but because the warranty was so far expired on them they did not want to honor that so watch out for that um, the more people I think push with that the uh, more likely they're going to fix the issue within their customer service other than that great tool they do have electrical issues that happen if you're really really using them all the time commercially or you just happen to have a lot of work to do on your property and you just love getting out and using the trimmer for a few hours at a time. Um, these tools will last you forever. I mean, I mean forever if you're just using them res residentially and you're just taking them out every now and again. They will last you forever. On the commercial level, if you're using them for um, professional use, uh, they're going to get you probably i want to say about two years or so before they start even having issues um, they'll start having issues at the tail end of that and usually it's something that uh, it's not one of those things where one issue happens and then the next issue and the next issue then that type of stuff usually it's either a burned out motor or a um, contact switch has gotten a diode or something that's been messed up in it and Usually all you have to do is just replace the part. Luckily, Ego sells the parts um, online that you can buy from like Amazon or you can buy directly from Ego and uh, they'll send you some replacement parts. Not as expensive as having somebody else do it. If you don't have a warranty on them anymore, it's worth looking into figuring out how to do it yourself. Um, you will need soldering tools at that point because that stuff is soldered in and you're going to need an ohms reader for checking electrical currents to find out where your uh, switch is not getting power and knowing where to replace that. Now, 